Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I got the idea of this video from Soph Does Life. She follows like different celebrity um, like makeup tutorials. She sees how like differently they do their makeup and how, if it works for her. I've been following on YouTube um, for a while a makeup artist called Hung Van Gogh. His makeup is just like that kind of like model flawless look. I'll leave his like, name at the bottom. And he, he did this monochrome brown. Not monochrome. It's like monochromatic brown look. And it was fab. So I want to follow what he does. He actually does things quite similar. Um, like in like the order of things well I always do my base first then my eyes and he kind of does it that way he doesn't do like eyes first um so yeah so I'm gonna leave like his video at the bottom we'll try and put it in there and then we can follow it along together and yeah just to mention I don't have all of the products he has I think I've got, only got like two um, the same but I've kind of looked through it and thought what I have is similar and hopefully we'll achieve the same look. Every makeup I always do skincare prep first. The first product I'm using is the Tatcha lip mask and I'm going to try to use everything from Tatcha today. Again not sponsored but I think it's easier a lot of times. So first of all, he moisturises the lips. It's just a Fenty, Fenty lip balm. But I keep this hair on my desk because it's just a nice, like, clean. Doesn't really have a smell, doesn't have a scent. So lips moisturised. The second product is the Silk Peony Eye Cream. This is a very beautiful eye cream. You can wear alone, day or night, or under makeup. The best way you need to warm it up a little bit like this. And then he pops some eye cream on. This is not anything that I do during my makeup process. I've got this Beauty Pie um, anti-wrinkle eye cream. Um, it's got hydrochloric acid in and it just comes in like a little pump. It's a bit different to like the little pots. Warm it up. It does make sense to kind of he pats, I need to remember to pat. It does make sense to moisturise this kind of space. I have dry skin so I can see this being beneficial. Oh and he goes a bit up here as well. And I'm using the overnight serum from Tatcha. It's called overnight but you can use it for day. It's basically, it's more a richer serum. It's really great for people who have dry skin and also if you want really long lasting hydration under your makeup okay so now he uses quite a rich cream serum so i've got the charlotte tilbury magic cream which is quite thick and then he kind of rubs it in his hands and then he like pats it in i don't normally pat but take a bit more I mean, maybe it brings like the blood to the surface. For moisturizer, I'm using Tatcha the Dewy Skin Cream. Then he goes in with the moisturizer. So I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Face Base as my second moisturizer. And he basically does the same thing. So he gets a blob rubs it on his hands so it's really warm and then he kind of again pushes it in i mean my face feels very moisturized but this is kind of what i would do before my makeup and then i would use a primer afterwards but I mean, my skin does feel very hydrated. 
for foundation and concealer i'm going to use the new foundation and the concealer both from our class for me it's medium to full beautiful coverage okay so now he uses a concealer and a foundation from the same brand so i've picked hmb cosmetics he also uses a very light foundation so this is very light um but i want to give it another go the finish was nice it was a bit matter than i thought but i didn't know if that was the primer but i guess i'm very moisturized today so hopefully maybe this will be a good way to test like the finish of this and yeah i've just chosen the soft focus airbrush concealer hopefully they work well together if they're from the same brand i'm sure they will so he kind of puts some on a he's got like a plate but so i'm gonna use the back of my hand as my palette okay and i'm just gonna dot this around the face he kind of just dots it you can see i use just a little bit and I blend it out and the best way is just put the foundation in the center and you blend it out because most of the time people's skin around here is pretty great it's always the red or the color is the one from the center here and he's kind of only kind of put it in the center which does make sense and then he goes in with quite a fluffy brush not a dense brush I'm gonna take this brush from HMB Cosmetics and just kind of blend this in like he does. I've put a bit more on because his coverage is better than mine. But I'm just going in the centre, he said the centre so. Just going back, I've got this another friend that I'll need to cover up. I actually don't mind how this is applying with this brush. I actually think it's like blending out quite lovely. This foundation is definitely more luminous than last time. So that pr the primer I used last time must have mattified. And then he applies his concealer with like a, with a little fluffy brush. Okay, again, I'm gonna put this on the back of my hand. For the concealer, I'm using the shade called Silk. It's a little bit more peachier undertone on the shade, but I like it. I think it's great for cover under the eye area. Laser doesn't have any major any blemishes to cover except for the under eye a little bit. So that's why I'm focused on this concealer. So I'm just applying this brush. I think this brush is a little bit big, but I only have like small or big brushes but I guess it is applying quite nicely and then I use a little just to cover some of the extra redness that I want to cover but her skin overall they cover everything with the foundation just going over a few of my blemishes So he uses the Chanel bronzing cream, but I have the Revolution dupe, which is just the Revolution Beauty cream bronzer in Inspire. For contour or just bronzing, I'm using one of my favorite, the Chanel bronzing cream. He takes a little brush. I'm going to take this kind of style brush and just swirl it around, picking up quite a bit of product and he goes quite heavy on the jawline I don't normally but I mean she has like a lot more of a chiseled jawline than myself so sometimes I feel like this does actually exaggerate that area but cream you use with a brush and you blend out is very blendable I feel like he uses quite a light hand, but he does apply quite a bit of product. And you can see I give Lizzo a great coverage with the foundation. So right now I'm just bringing back some of, you know, the bone structure and everything. 
I like to build, so that's how I'm doing everything step by step like that. And for me, it's like building a house. When you do complexion, you start with really good skincare, and then you go from there. You can be foundation and everything, and step by step. And he does, I would normally leave like this area clear, but he does add bronzer in that area. So, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's just not the jaw, the jaw is not, not my journey. And then I use a little brush like this with a little bronzer. Just create a little more depth around here. And he does kind of the inner eye kind of contour. Again, this is not something that I do. I do see a lot of people doing this, but it's just never really been, I've always just thought it's a bit of a unnecessary step. I can see the plus in this. It's kind of just adding that dimension in that area. For powder, I'm going to use the translucent powder from Huda Beauty. The shade I'm using called Pound Cake. Okay, so now he powders. I've just got my Laura Mercier translucent. And he literally just gets a really fluffy brush, like a really fluffy one. And just like softly goes around the face <laughs> everywhere doesn't really bake. I am just gonna have to blend in and up my under eyes and just use this fluffy brush to softly set. Under the eye area, trying to keep everything pretty matte for this look. Even I prep her skin really well and dewy but I still gonna keep the makeup matte. Again, I know if you do a matte makeup, it doesn't mean you don't prep the skin. So keep that in mind. The skin has to be fully prepped. If you don't, the skin gonna look very cakey. Jaw is still a bit much, but now I've powdered, it doesn't bother me as much. I'm going to use some bronzer as well. I just do right after the powder, just to set where I contour or I shade in from the cream contour. I love to layer the product because that's gonna, you're gonna build, you know, if anything, gonna last way longer. Okay, so powder, bronzer. I've got the Glowish in Soft Radiance. He uses Laguna, and I know from NARS, and I know that has a slight sheen. Again, he uses quite a soft brush. I'm gonna use my trusty um, Kabuki brush from NARS. And he starts with the temples. It is giving me very, I don't know, I don't want to say minimal makeup because I, I'm putting a lot on, but very, like, soft, like, you can really see my skin underneath, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. For eyebrow, I'm going to use two products. This is a Brow Wiz from Anastasia Beverly Hill, and the brow powder I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the shade blonde. I do backwards like this. Just create the depth and bring back all the hair that Lizzo have. So you see that this way is actually make the eyebrow look fuller again. I'm just gonna start by brushing up. I'm just gonna zoom you in actually for this. So he starts by brushing the brows. She definitely has better brows than me. I have like really like blonde bits. So when you look front ways, my tails get really light. But I literally don't do anything with my eyebrows. I don't pluck them, I don't shape them. I know that if I did, maybe my tails would look a bit nicer. Right, he gets a powder. I'm just gonna use a, I'm just gonna use a taupey eyeshadow. And this very little brush from Morphe. Brush it up, you can see that it just have a lot more depth. Cause she have pretty good eyebrow, and it's quite full, but because they fair fair, so you don't see it. So this one, you just bring back the depth. So he pushes the brows backwards whilst putting this 
through here. I feel like it's just making my eyebrows look a bit crazy, but. The key is just do a little bit at a time, you know? Just do it like that. You can do the whole eyebrow just this. You don't have to use the pencil either. Just the powder if you want to. And then you brush up. So I guess it doesn't look bad. And then he brushes it back normally. I mean, I don't feel like that's done much to my brows. I guess, mm, I guess it has given it something. You slowly, you build the eyebrow and you use the pencil. And then he takes a pencil. I've got the Refi brow pencil and he just does the end. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in that bit. That's the bit where I find that. And you keep doing that until the shape you desire. That I have the like, it does, I like a rounded arch and mine go quite up here. So I always round and lower that. I mean, it's not the worst brow I've ever had. It's just quite natural and quite soft, but I guess like model makeup is quite soft. It's just meant to enhance. So I'm not mad about it. I used to use powder. Do you remember when Benefit had that like, du I'm sure they still do, the, du the duo powder. I used to use that a lot on my brows, but I quite like this natural natural brow look. It's weird seeing them with no gel in, like at all. Um, but they literally do just look like my brows are, but, but fuller. Eye primer from Jason Wool Beauty. First, I'm gonna prim the eye a little bit. So he, he uses quite a full coverage eye base. I'm just gonna use some leftover concealer and just run this all over my eyes. He says he uses a colour that's very close to her skin tone, so I am going, and it's quite full coverage. So I'm just going to run this over both my eyes. Next, I'm using the brown long wear pencil. And I use the blending brush. You can see this way. Close your eye. And now he takes a brown pencil. So this, it's going to be a brown look. So I think we're going to do brown on the eyes, brown lips. I have this all smudge, no budge pencil from Maybe I'm Mitchell. Um, and he kind of runs this all along the top lash line and kind of wings it out. He hasn't set the eye base at all. Um, so let's see how this turns. And I smudge it outward and upward. And look down for me. And, and he takes a brush and he just smudges it out ever so slightly. I do quite like this technique for creating like a winged out look. Normally I would use an angled brush shadow, but this is quite easy to do and I feel like you can really like build and manipulate the product this way by going back in after you've smudged. And I do also in the upper waterline as well so this i get a lot of depth and he also tight lines as well this is something that i never do no one ever really sees that part of your eye but we're doing it today so basically i do the brown shadow all over the lid and you see the way i do is i press little product at a time i don't go all over the place and i use a flat brush so this way is have more control doesn't have any fallout if you do it this way so he takes the kind of like a flat-ish brush 
and he kind of puts this all over the lid but after he's done the liner which is interesting so i'm gonna do it so you see just like that and don't worry that it's not too perfect blending because you're gonna blend after and he goes quite far out Okay, and now all of a sudden he's like done the other eye. So I am going to do the same on the other eye. Okay, so we've got two eyes. Next, you can use a fluffy blending brush. This color, I'm going to I'm going to use for blending. And then just do a little bit on the crease area. Okay, so now we take a fluffy brush and like an peachy orange so i've got this from the my other beauty bay palette i'm going to take this kind of orangey tone orange peachy it's called raw sienna and he blends out with this to blend the edge it out it's pretty straightforward what i'm doing it's nothing complicated i think anyone can do what i'm doing you just play with them. I just did the same on this side. And he goes quite high with this other colour. Um, okay, I definitely think that um, adding that, it's almost like the transition colour is afterwards. But definitely blending that out has, with that fluffy brush has just helped massively next I use a flat brush and I do a little bit along the lower lash line this is just define the eye shape okay now it takes a flat brush and again with that peachy color runs it underneath it's not too much of the color I just use the same color that I use on the crease area and I use this just to blend it out a little bit just define the eye shape more so he doesn't take the darker color which is interesting I do think because I didn't set my under eyes much as I normally do I have got a tiny bit of creasing but okay now he's gonna highlight so I've got this um, highlighter from Matt, and I'm just gonna run this underneath my brow bone, and then use another brush, lighter color here, close your eye. You can give a little highlight there, or not. Another color I use. Look up for me. A little bit right there. Kind of glams it up a bit because it adds a little sparkle. And he's running that on the inside corner as well. I always curl the lashes, even just a pinch. Curls eyelashes. I literally always just don't do this. I think it's scary and an unnecessary step, but... It still make a big difference on the mascara. I mean, you can already see that they're up, so maybe this is something that I need to do. And then this is something that I do have that he uses. It's the Milk Rise Mascara. I wasn't super impressed with this when I used it. I did like the formula of it, but I wasn't a fan of the wand. I quite like a, um, sorry, I got itch. I quite like a plastic wand, not like a bristly wand. And then I'm going to do two coats on the upper lashes. This is a great mascara here. You guys should try it out as well. It gives you tons and tons of volume. Okay. 
curling it has made a massive difference. Maybe curling is something I need to add into my makeup routine. Okay, starting to come together. Let me just do my other eye. Okay, I'm super happy with how my mascara has come out. Definitely think curling them is the way forward and maybe I need to stop being lazy and incorporate that into my routine. Okay, so now he does cream blush after we have like done all our powder which I think is um interesting so I've got the made by Mitchell melon sorbet he said to go for something and I feel like this will go with that kind of color that we used second on our own. blush I'm using this cream blush from Stila I know it looked deep but and then you blend it out it's just because I keep everything in the theme of the shade. So that's why I'm using this shade. At the same time, as you sculpt in your face as well. You see, it's really, really nice on the skin. I do a little bit more on the temple. For highlighter, I'm going to use this beautiful highlighter stick from a Japanese brand called Addiction. And you give a lot of radiance everywhere on the face. Okay, he uses a highlighter stick. I just don't have that. So I'm going to use the same highlighter that I used on my eye. I don't know why, because I do like quite glowy skin, why I stopped using highlighter. I think... We all went through that phase where our highlighter was so intense and so blinding. I think it put, and then we all like switched to this very clean makeup. I think in my head I still have that kind of like bright, but actually it's given me just a really soft glow. So maybe again, maybe we need to bring the highlighter back. Lastly for lips, I'm going to use my Whirl lip liner, which is like a really nice just neutral brown. To start, I'm just redefining the lip shape of Liesl. So you see that I'm not changing anything, just follow her lip shape. I love that she has the lip shape like this, so I just follow exact. And I'm not going to overline as much as I normally do. Just gonna follow my natural shape. Bleed the way it is before I apply the lips color. That cream color, I mean. So it is the lips I'm using today. This is like a whole series of shade of nude color that she has. I just chose this shade. I know it's quite intense, but I think it's interesting. And then for lipstick, again, I've got MAC. I've used quite some, but some old school stuff. Today I've got Taupe from MAC, which is just a very basic brown. It looks very red, so maybe I need something cool. So I'm going to go over this with Posh Spice from Jeffree Star. And this might just cool it, yeah, cool it down. I love these little minis. This colour is actually quite grey by itself, so it's good to cool, cool things down. Yeah, cool. It's kind of like 90s vampy. I think this lip colour is similar to what he, what he used. 
and then he sets it with the Urban Decay All Nighter. To set the makeup, I'm going to set it with the setting spray from Urban Decay. This is the All Nighter. That is the final look, guys. This is my version of the monochrome brown tone makeup. So, overall, I think it actually really came together. My skin looks actually really lovely. It is definitely less base than I would normally wear. But my skin has this kind of like glow. The eyes, I think, again, worked out in the end nicer than I thought. Halfway through, I was thinking, God. And the brows, again, it's almost like natural glam. So it's quite full on in areas. Like, the, obviously, the lips and the eyes are quite bold but compared to like my skin it almost feels like I'm not wearing anything so yeah overall I'm actually really happy with this look I'm definitely gonna curl my eyelashes more I'm definitely going to try the brow trick but maybe just run some clear brow gel through um and yeah there's definitely some tips and tricks that i'm gonna take forward let me know what you think below of, of the monochromatic i like the brown with the brown if you don't follow hung van gogh definitely give him a follow he does some really just cool makeup looks and they're all just very kind of easy to follow let me know if you like this style of video. I can definitely do more. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed following this along with me. Um, and I'll see you again soon.